Hello, welcome back to Talk. Welcome back, Dougie. How's your week been, brother? Yeah, it's been alright. Just some exams, some studying, some sashimi, some graduations. Oh, yeah, your sister graduated. Yeah, from yeah college. Got rolled last night. Australia just starting to hit these straps, eh? They might be making a run. You know that um, their one against Netherlands was the biggest margin ever in men's ODI. Just not even World Cup. Is that right? Time. Yeah. Glenn Maxwell, 100 or 40 balls. Yeah, that, I thought I thought he was going to get out first ball, and he, he played well. Big game against Australia for New Zealand on Saturday night. 50-50, I reckon. 50-50, we're playing well. Our bats went flying, so are theirs. I think our bowlers might be going a touch better than these, though. So, yeah, we'll see. And then go the Mighty All Blacks on Sunday yeah. morning, World Cup final. I'll be at work watching it. Yeah, I'll be at home watching it with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Hey, big week last week on the track. Yeah, yeah, it was. We had, what, five runners? How many winners? Five. Trifecta. Trifecta, three winners. Yeah, starting off with This Is Dramatic, who won a Group 3 Thompson handicap. Yeah, she's flying. She's now stakes on at 2, 3, and 4. She was really good, and there's a stack of improvement in her. Uh, she heads to the quarter of a million dollar Copeland's Mile next start on the 15th of November. And then Chablis won third... Uh, in a row at Eagle Farm. Yeah, he's flying. He should probably be four in a row this prep. He just didn't get any luck first up. So he's won three in a row. He's low flying and he heads probably to the Rose Hall Gold Cup now, the 4th of November, $750,000 race over 2,000 metres. Uh, one of our imports. One of our imports. One of our great imports that just goes so well. Mm. And then Iberian Ruler completed the trifecta on Sunday. Yeah, he did. He's just been taking a little bit of time, but he's a big, mature staying horse, and he bolted it, and he won by about four. It was a maiden in Class 1, so he's beaten horses one before. Um, and he'll either go to Eagle Farm for a 2,400-metre race on Melbourne Cup Day or possibly a 2,200-metre race the day after, but you'll get a lot of confidence from that. Big Bay Wolf for the lovely debut for third on Saturday. Wasn't it? Beautiful debut. He's looking for further. He was green. He'll learn a lot. Really talented horse going forward. Mm. Then Spaycaster was second to uh, Randwick. Yeah, another one of our imports, one that we bought last year. Uh, he broke the track record his previous start. He just got, there was a tear away leader, and he was back in the field, and he had about 20 lengths to make up, and he closed to within about a length and a half. It was super run. He's a really, really good stayer going forward, and he'll now go to a hundred and Australian $160,000 2400 mid race in a couple of weeks' time. Mm. Um, he's, a, he's a really good horse on the rise. And finally, you've been at the horses and training sale. Uh, you, sorry, you've been buying horses at the training sale at Tattersalls in England? Yeah, so we just talked about two of them, right? Shibley's won three in a row, going for three quarter million dollar race. Spaycaster, very good horse. So we've been buying this week. Uh, one more day to go of buying, but we've bought two so far, and the value has been unbelievable. We've been buying horses. Um, at the prices we're buying them in 2017, 2018. Uh, we're so far under budget on them and they're group level horses. So we've got a list of people that um, are interested, but there might be a space or two left. So if you want to get involved, email me, don't delay, because these are the best value horses we've bought and they're going to be enormous fun in Australia. Moving on to this week on Saturday at Rickerton Race 5, we have deals done. Yeah. He's coming up well. Good run last start. He ran, this is a 3,000 metre race. He ran second in it last year on a firm track, beaten very narrowly. Horse that bet him that day, LJ, is one of the favourites for the New Zealand Cup. 3,000 metre suits, barrier two suits. The firm track doesn't suit, but he's a die in the wall star, so he can run really well. And this is his launching pad into the New Zealand Cup. And then at Pukukohi race five, we have GC. Very unlucky last start at Hastings. Just couldn't get clear. He's going really well. He's got a nice barrier draw of two. Uh, nice weight for him. He should sit, you know, handy-ish to midfield. Uh, 1,500 metre suits. He's won at Pukekohe. I like his chances. Mm. Then race six is Margaret Jean. So she's on trial for the New Zealand Cup. Um, she steps up to 2,200 metres. Awkward, not a great draw for her, but great jockey and Vinnie Colgan on board. She too has won at Counties. Um, she's ready to run a really good race, and as long as she runs well, she'll head to the New Zealand Cup. So it's, um, you know, she, she, she's pretty much ready. 
Then at Randwick, race six is Skyman. Another one of our imports is won over a million dollars. He runs in the Craven Plate, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar race over eighteen hundred meters. Distance really suits him. Last start. He just got back in a race that was dominated on speed. He actually ran well, but he just couldn't make ground. So he'll probably be three quarters of the way back from the straw in the field, but over 1,800 metres should allow horses to build into the race. Um, he races really well at Randwick. He's over the odds at $21. Uh, looks a nice, really nice option for him. He can he can be a player. At Gold Coast, race three, Sir Zeno. Just waiting for confirmation of that race. We believe it'd be race three. Last two starts, he's won at the Gold Coast and then run third. He just had to come wide on the straight and the lead has kind of shot away and he closed up late. Uh, the 1,900 metres is a touch short for him, I think, but he's on a good vein of form. He's ready to run well and this race sets him up nicely for a race in uh, nine days' time over 2,400 metres at Eagle Farm. So I expect him to go a really nice race. Just the shortness of the distance is the only query. Mm. And then at Newberry, we got Jesus. Jesus in England, yeah. yeah. So Jesus, she is a um, really good filly. She's with Joseph O'Brien, one of our horses we've bought to stay in Europe to start with, then come down to Australia. She won her second start very impressively at Thurls over a mile. She's a two-year-old. So, so she's entered for a, the listed uh, high clear stakes uh, in Newbury. Um, it's going to be pretty wet. So while she's just going to be, she's a staying filly and she went over a mile. This is 1,400 metres, but it's going to be pretty wet. So it's going to suit horses that can stay. We're just waiting for those draws to get out, come out. But she'll be a player in this race. And we're looking to secure black type for her and uh, secure her value as a broodmare. Um, by the end of the season. So re really exciting times. Just have a look at our website because we'll update that with the race details once that fields out. Mm. And then now time for Bit of the Week. So this Bit of the Week, uh, me, Albert, Matt and Nettie have all taken a bet on the Cox play. Yeah, we've all had a pick. So I thought it was I'll, a good way to, to do yeah, give yeah. it to people and they can decide. I think it's a good way. So we'll just go through one by one and then yeah. you talk a bit about it. So my pick, I've gone for Mr. Bryce side. Yeah. Mainly, mainly because of the name, but also. Well, New Zealand bred horse. He is the form horse in Australia. Weight for age holds no fears. 2,000 metres should be fine for him as well. Um, yeah, like he's, he's, I think he's over the odds at $6.50. He's a very good horse. Then, mm. Albie, you've gone for gold chip. I think this horse is going better than last year uh, when he won the Melbourne Cup. He was very good in the Cox Plate last week, carrying. You know, top weight running third. This week it's weight for age, so it's level weight. So all those horses have got to carry the weight he, he does and come up to him. So I think there'll be good speed on with the alligator blood up front. I think Mr. Brightside will sit handy. And I think it sets it up for him to finish over the top of them. Mm. And then Matt is going for a militarise. Yeah, 49 and a half kilos. Good jockey, Zach Lloyd on board. Carrying no weight by Dundee. She'll have no problem with the distance. Um... Three good three year olds in this race are always really, really hard to beat. So he's a you know, he's a very distinct chance. Trained by Chris Waller as well, is it? Yeah, trained by Chris Waller, yes. And Chris then Waller. Nettie has gone for Victoria Road. Yeah, yeah, the import. So Aiden O'Brien has bought Victoria Road over. Um it, never to be under underestimated. Form is very, very good in Europe. Europeans have a great record on this race. Joseph O'Brien's won it before. Um, really good chance. It's a very even Cox Plate. Often you come to a Cox Plate in the past few years, you've had a Winks in there or in days gone by, a Sunline or a really obvious favourite. You don't this year, so it's going to make it exciting. Um, and I think if you get the trifecta or, top, or first four, you're going to do really well. Yeah. So that concludes a uh, bit of the week and that concludes Shoot Talk. It does. We'll be back next week. We'll talk a little bit about the imports that we've bought and we'll talk about Sports Results World Cup Final and Cricket World Cup. Go the All Blacks! She leads by four legs. The champion New Zealand mare has raced away in the Cox Plate. Dyer Tribe and Referral are running onto the pacings, followed by Testa Rossa and then Scusi, please. But the champion mare is going to kill them. She's five in front, Sunline, and a piece of racing history. Back-to-back -back Cox Plates for the champion mare, Sunline. She's won it by six lengths easily.